I am Dr. S. S. Patil, Professor, Department of Civil Engineering, Walt Institute of Technology, Solapur. Today we shall discuss about a column subjected to combined axial load and uniaxial bending. Learning outcomes. At the end of this session, students will be able to analyze and design column subjected to combined axial load and uniaxial bending. When there is no moment, that is MU is 0, then it is a pure axial load case. And in this case, failure strain in compression is 0 0.002. For such case, taking into account only the minimum eccentricity, the IS456 has given the following equation for determination of PU, that is load carrying capacity. So, PU is equal to 0.4 FCKAC, 0.67 FY ASC, area of concrete and area of longitudinal steel. If axial load PU is equal to 0, if axial load PL, PU is equal to 0 and bending moment MU is the only load, it is a pure moment case and hence the design will be like that of beam. But in design of many columns, we come across the two, the above two extreme cases. If axial load is more, naturally its moment carrying capacity will be less and vice versa. These are the two cases we come across always. And also should be, uh, is also holds good. And IS456 recommends the design of such column with an assumption that the maximum compressive strain at highly compressed extreme fiber in concrete subjected to axial compression and bending when there is no tension shall be 0 0.0035 minus 0 0.75 times the strain at the least compressed extreme fiber. That means we are having maximum compressive fiber towards which it is the moment is acting. Now, based on all such calculation, because it is a very tedious and uh, it is a highly uh, indeterminate problem, and then therefore, based on all such calculations, interaction curves have been developed to assist the designers and, and are presented in the design aid for reinforced concrete to IS 456 1978. by Bureau of Indian Standard. This special publication is popularly known as SP-16. It is called as SP-16. SP stands for special publication. A typical interaction diagram is as shown in figure 1. That is this particular figure. So, in this following points are clearly visible. A is the pure moment case that means here you find A that means this is pure moment there is no axial load it is a pure moment case. C is pure compression case that is axial compression case this is C. C is the axial compression case or pure compression case and B that is this is B point shows that the point there failure strain in concrete and steel reach their limiting values simultaneously. That means here the failure strain of concrete and steel are reached simultaneously. So our things, our columns are usually between B and C that is compression failure. For compression failure it should be between B and C. So in region B to C compression failure takes place. And here you find Along the y axis, you we are having PU upon FCKBD, and along x axis, MU upon FCKBD square. So, this is to convert the values into non dimensional parameters. So, PU it is the load, similarly, FCKBD is also a, a load. So, this is this is acting load, and this is moment uh, cap ca carrying capacity. Similarly, here also, moment and its carrying capacity. So, 
so now the design charts are given in the form of interaction diagrams in which p u upon f c k b d versus m u upon f c k b d square are plotted for different value of p by f c k p is percentage steel and f c k is characteristic strength of concrete where and sp 16 gives a chart for designing rectangular sections having reinforcement on two sides that means if reinforcement is provided only on two sides so chart number 27 to 38 that that will give you this as shown in figure 2 that means here it is shown the reinforcement on four sides as shown in figure 3 so the charts in sp16 is 39 to 50 the now please remember this particular curve it is not a single curve you find for various percentage there are curves parallel to this above this as well as below this so therefore you will get a number of curves for different values of p by fck where p is percentage of steel divided by fck so that means we are supposed to find out from this chart what will be the value of percentage steel what will be the value of percentage steel the charts figure 3 are prepared for a section with 20 bars equally distributed so please see here here there are these are 10 bars similarly these are 10 bars which are distributed equally twenty bars equally distributed on all four sides but they can be used without significant error for other numbers also it is a a diagram shown but that can be used for any other number also but use these charts minimum eight number of bars should be selected or at least six are needed distributing equally on four sides so that means the charts for circular section it is from 51 to 62 so above is for rectangular section where we have seen the eight bars were used and 51 to 62 again it is for the circular section have been prepared for a a section again eight bars are shown in this also for section with any number of bars but not less than 6 because for circular minimum number of bars required are 6 for longitudinal reinforcement charts have been given for three grades of steel and that is mild steel fe415 fe500 and four values of d dash by d so please remember d dash by d D dash is the effective cover to the reinforcement, and D is your depth of the beam. This is breadth, and this is depth. So D dash by D for various values of D dash by D for four values of D dash by D, which is which usually we find in case of column that is given. If the reinforcement is placed on only two sides, now this is an example wherein only reinforcement is placed on two types. so that means here we are supposed to find out the from sp16 we should find out what is the p by fck p u upon fck bd we have calculated from the given values that was sort of 0.367 m u upon fck bd square is calculated 0.125 d dash by d it is 60 divided by 400 it is 0.15 that is an example taken for explaining how it is if it is on only two faces then we are if you refer the chart it is 33 number chart which will give us in sp16 p by fck value 
so p is the percentage steel therefore if you just calculate the percentage steel it was sort to be 2790 mm square so provide six number of 25 mm diameter bars three on each face so asc provided is 2945 which is greater than required now this is the reinforcement on two faces so 8 mm diameter bars are used for lateral stays maximum spacing 16 times diameter or least lateral dimension that is 300 so therefore provide 8 mm diameter links at 300 center to center and these are the six bars which are provided on two faces and equally they are spaced now if we provide on four faces if we provide on four faces then the reinforcement on all four forces uh, faces you will find the corresponding chart will be chart number 45 so pe upon fckbd and me upon fckbd square this is already calculated pe upon fck if you just determine from the chart it was sort to be 0.115% so therefore we have taken the the percentage steel was sort to be 2.875 because it is p by fck value so asc based on the percentage steel it is p by 100 into this particular area of con column that is 300 and by 400 so it gives us 3450 mm square so provide eight bars of 25 mm diameter ast provided is 3927 mm square in this case also lateral is required are 8 mm diameter spacing again 300 center to center they are provided as shown in figure 5 this is figure 5 here you will find 300 by 400 and here eight bars are there so three three at top three at bottom and two at middle so likewise the lateral ties are provided with 8 mm diameter three so these are the references used for the presentation thank you thank you one and all